Are you a bedroom singer or producer who records himself in their home or apartment? Do you struggle to get consistently good vocal recordings? Well, here are five tips to improve the quality of your home vocal recordings without having to go to a studio. Tip number one, choose a room with stuff in it. Things like a bed, bookshelves, tapestries on the wall, carpet, rugs, things like that. Anything that can help absorb some of the sound and reflections of your room. Now, why do you want to limit reflections? When you sing into your microphone, the sound from your voice inevitably travels and bounces off the walls and back into your microphone. And those reflections represent the sound of your room. Now, this is a good thing if you have a great sounding room or you want the natural reverb of your room in your recording. But for a lot of people, you generally want to add the reverb, delay, effects, room sound after the fact in your DAW through plugins or through other means and don't necessarily want the reverb of the room you're recording in, especially if you're recording from a bedroom or at home that's not necessarily treated or not necessarily made for sound recording. Now, of course, there's plenty of exceptions to this. If you have a great sounding room naturally or you want that sound for a specific effect in your song and it works in your mix, um, that's all great and you should keep it. But for most people, you want to keep it as dry as possible, limit the amount of reflections and room sounds so you can add that and have more creative control over your vocal in the mix, in your DAW, after you record. Now, if you live in a studio apartment like I used to, or uh, just have one room to record in, there's different things you can try. You can try moving your microphone around different parts of the room. You'd be surprised how big of a difference it can make moving your mic from just one spot to just two feet away. You can also try, if you have a closet or an open closet, to replace the microphone in front of your closet so that your clothes can absorb some of the sound. That can be really effective. Experiment and try different things. Tip number two, record an appropriate distance away from the mic. Now what's an appropriate distance? Generally speaking, it's anywhere from six to 12 inches away from the microphone. This can be approximate easily with the five finger rule. So what you do is you just take your hand and you kind of spread your fingers apart ever so slightly. And then the distance between the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky is roughly the distance that works for most people and for most scenarios. The reason why we want to stay that distance away from the microphone is for two reasons. One is dynamics, which is to limit the amount of extreme volume changes you have from movement of your head. So naturally, when most people sing, they move their head a little bit, and the closer you are to the microphone, the more dramatic small changes in distance are going to make a big difference in volume. Now, the further away you are from the mic, the more the more of a buffer you have to get less of an extreme change in volume as you move your head to and fro a little bit. So that distance is generally a good balance of both. The second reason is to get a good balance of bass to treble frequencies. You'll notice that as you get closer to the microphone, the more bass frequencies you have, hence that kind of in your ear, kind of soft whisper voice, kind of almost ASMR voice. And the further away you get from the microphone, the less bass response you get. So this will obviously depend on the style of music that you record, um, and, but that distance usually is a good uh, balance of the two. What's an easy way to make sure that you stay an appropriate distance away from the mic without having to think about it? That's to mark that distance with a pop filter. And that leads me to my third tip, which is use a pop filter. What is a pop filter? A pop filter is a device that kind of looks like this. You've probably seen them in pictures of studios. And what it does, it helps to limit plosives or the puffs of air at the beginning of some sounds um, that can rattle the capsule inside of a microphone and cause unwanted reverberations. These typically come on words with P's and B's on them, like parachute or parabolic. Uh, and the pop filters catch enough of the air to prevent it from causing reverberation that you generally don't want in your recording. This is a recording of the plosive without the pop filter. Parachute, parabolic. And this is the recording with the pop filter. No plosive, parachute, parabolic. And as I mentioned before, you can kind of place them, say like the distance you want, that five finger distance, and have your pop filter that distance so you know that you can just get as close as you can to the microphone without getting closer than that, and it'll help you keep um, your distance. Pop filters range anywhere from $20 to $100 or more, but I generally recommend if you have the money to try to get a decent quality one. It can seem like a lot of money, but if you have the money, they're definitely worth it. They can definitely save you a lot of editing time and catch a lot of those plosives better than um, some of the cheaper ones. That being said, if money is tight, and trust me, I've been there, um, you have two alternatives. You can DIY your own, a pop filter that you can make them pretty easily. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube. Generally just involves some sort of like embroidery hoop that you can get from like Michaels or a craft store for you know a couple bucks. And then you know a pair of pantyhose that you can kind of just like stretch over the hoop. Um, and that works as a pop filter too. The other option is to simply just 
turn the microphone at an angle away from your mouth. Sometimes just changing it at a slight angle can be enough to catch enough of the air at an angle and not rattle the capsule and cause those plosives or reverberations. Now obviously there's a trade-off. Uh, it changes the sound when you angle the mic um, in some ways you may or may not like. But usually if you just change it ever so slightly, you can get a good balance between those two of a sound you want and limit plosives without necessarily having to use a pop filter. Tip number four, record however you are comfortable. Now this one might seem kind of obvious, but I just want to remind you all about one of the best things about being a bedroom producer or singer and recording in your home, which is time and flexibility. In a traditional studio, you are spending money every minute you're in that studio you book time probably weeks or months in advance, and sometimes that can be really hard to change. So you have a lot of pressure. Sometimes the space you're recording in may or may not be a place that's comfortable for you. You might be around people you don't know as well, and may or may not be as comfortable around them. On the contrary, in your home studio, you have all the time that you want to record whenever you have time. You're paying nothing to be there other than, I guess, maybe the rent that you're paying anyways. So take advantage of that. If you know that your voice is best in the morning right when you wake up, record right when you wake up in the morning. If you are better at night, after you've had a cigarette, whatever it is, set up those conditions for the best performance possible. Phineas, the older brother and producer for Billie Eilish, said that when they were recording their first songs, like Ocean Eyes and those um, first songs that rocketed them to stardom, uh, they would wait till Billie's voice felt best and record only at those times. So for example, they'd work on a song and she'd sing the first verse. And the second verse would be just like a little too high and she wouldn't feel it that day. So he said that they'd wait a couple of days or a week and then Billy would wake up one day and be like, you know, I think I have it today. And so they'll record the second verse. And then they'll wait again until she felt like, you know what, today is a really, my voice is feeling really good today. I think I can hit that run. And they'd record that sometimes days or weeks later. So always create the, the ideal conditions for you, whatever that means. And that's not just limited to the time of day or simple things like that. If you feel more free singing naked in your room, sing naked. If you're recording like a really sleepy, lo-fi, down-tempo song, you could try recording while laying down on the floor with the lights completely off. If you're recording a J-Rock song and you're inspired by anime, have anime playing in the background on a monitor to inspire you while you sing. All these things can influence your performance and can just help you get into the zone um, and have you get a better recording. At the end of the day, it's all about the vibe and performance of your recording. An amazing performance with mediocre recording will always sound better than an amazing recording with a mediocre performance. Tip number five, break the rules. Feel free to break any of the rules or tips in this video or any of the rules that any book or YouTube tutorial or even expert engineer tells you to do. I used to think that recording and audio engineering was this exact science and that if you just went to school or entered a studio and learned all the right things to do, then your recordings would always sound amazing. And in reality, after I got into it and have been doing it for many years and have talked to many professional audio engineers, the reality is that recording and audio engineering is as much of an art form as songwriting or performing and that really every song is a blank slate and an opportunity for creativity. So at the end of the day, if something sounds good to you, keep it. Trust your ears. Your ears are much better than you think. You've been listening to music your entire life and you know exactly what sounds good to you. So if something sounds good to you, chances are that people who like the same style of music that you like, um, and probably people who will listen to music, will also think it sounds good. So don't be afraid to just experiment, Try plugins, move your microphone around, try different techniques, and um, if it sounds good to you, keep it. Also, just a reminder that some of the biggest innovations in recording and modern music came about because people made a mistake or did something outside the box that they weren't supposed to with recording engineering. Everything from distortion in guitars to bass heavy music to even the way modern hip hop vocals are recorded. They all started with someone making a mistake or doing something they weren't supposed to be doing and breaking the rules of good recording at, at that time. So don't be afraid to experiment and try some new things. You might just discover something super cool that will change the way you record modern music and inspire us all. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and got some useful tips to help you improve your home vocal recordings. Also, if you use some of these tips and you do recording or you find new things, um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear your recordings. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to help me um, reach more people on YouTube. Uh, I'll be doing videos like this about one to two a month, uh, so if you want to get notifications when I have new videos, you can hit the subscribe button below. Thanks everyone, and I'll talk to you later.